What's going on with you, bro? Man, stuck in this motherfucking traffic, my nigga. Let me tell y'all where, where the fuck we at. So, man, we're in the middle of Ace Town, stuck in motherfucking traffic, man. What's going on, world? <clears throat> yeah, man, so I just wanted to chop it up with you. We're, we're creating a platform where we're trying to get all the artists on here and uh, not just the artists, but the, the, the people behind the scenes, the promoters, the managers, the fucking name it, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I know you've been in the business for a minute and uh, tell us a little bit about you being in the business a little bit. Man, shit, man, you know About the history, the history. I, I, I'm, I'm a jack of all trades. Basically, I was born in the industry, man. You know what I'm saying? Because of my father and my mother with the things that they did. So, you know, my old man was a world-renowned chef. So I've been around A-listers and celebrities my whole entire life. So by default, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I kind of was born into this motherfucking industry, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> who, who, who all have you worked with? I work with uh, Beyonce. I don't work with uh, Metallica. I don't work with ACDC. I don't work with Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin. The list goes on and on. Uh, modern modern bands, modern rock bands. Uh, well, I could say, uh, what is that? I forgot. Paradonics or whatever, some shit like that. I don't work with the Cranberries, Alejandra Guzman. I don't work with uh, Fiona Apple. And that's what's up. You work with a lot of motherfuckers in the industry, bro. Well, I mean, I started off, man, doing, you know, basically being a roadie, man, just setting up the sound set, you know, build, building the stages and shit like that. So, you know, basically just acquiring all the knowledge as as, as I progress and I learn how to run sound. I run how to light pyro. Uh, then I learn how to run the drones, you know, learn how to run the sound. These are things that I learned. It took many years for me to learn working with different companies and stuff and working with different artists and being on their, being their roadies, personal roadies. Uh, but, you know, shit, I've been in the industry for a long time, man. There's nothing that I cannot do because I'm a business savvy individual. So anything that has to do with doing the, the from loading up the equipment and setting up the stages to run the whole console, run the whole show, selling the tickets, nigga, I could do everything, you know, so it is what it is. Down. Uh, so are you in the music business right now? Yes, sir. What do you, what do you got going as far as uh, that? Basically right now I'm the a and GT Digital slash Empire. So I've been working with a lot of new talent. You know, I've been traveling around the country, uh, acquiring our new talent, getting new people that uh, they haven't been exposed, you know, getting them on the right platform. All right. So you're over there working with Gotos? Yeah. Yes, sir. Dad and I am also working with other conglomerates too as well. So... You know, when you're a freelancer, man, you 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 can work with anybody you want. You know, right, right, right. Uh, I've been working with Benzino lately, so I'm gonna be managing his career here pretty soon. So, oh. yeah, so Benzino from New York. Or what, what, Benzino, you know, the Benzino, the owner of the store, so the only one Benzino loving hip hop. So, yeah, oh. we've been working. Uh, I got many other artists that that we haven't solidified that we ain't got no contracts yet, so I can't speak on it. But this one, I can't speak on it because we got a contract, so I am working with Benzino. I am his manager, so oh, yeah, man. it, is, it is what it is. Man, man I see you in a, in, a, in a different car every week, man. You know, you, you uh, know, you got really and truly, really and truly, we got two family cars that we have, but I do have another car, couple cars that I do pay in notes yeah. on that I'm using it for Turo reasons. And so the smart thing is, Go ahead and when people want to come into the city i got a couple churros in la and a couple here in houston so when people do actually book you know to use the vehicle it pays the car note and i don't have to pay it and it's just being business savvy same thing with an airbnb you know what i'm saying you buy airbnb you buy a brand new home you ain't got to live in that home you rent it out and if you can get 20 days out of the month booked then it's gonna pay. It's gonna pay the mortgage itself. You know what I'm saying? So it's about doing things smart, man. Be able to collect money while you're sleeping. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? I'm, I got too many kids, too many grandkids. So I think about that generational wealth. I don't make these little motherfucking pity pat moves that a lot of cats got, that, that a lot of dudes do, because I'm looking for longevity. I'm looking for the long haul. My name is gonna be spoken 200 years after I'm fucking dead and gone. You know what I'm saying? for the shit that I'm doing today. Most people, man, are in it for the season, they're in it for the short haul. Not me, brother. 
I've been in the music industry. I've been rapping. I've been battle rapping since 89, to be honest with you. Uh, I could have signed with No Limit Records. I could have signed with Atlantic. I could have did all kinds of things, but me being the street nigga and being savvy as I am, I always relied on myself. And I never wrote the coattail nobody. So uh, that kind of hindered me too, because I could have skipped a couple trips to prison if I would have signed those record deals, but being a hard head, make a soft ass, you know what I'm saying? So I did what I had to do. But today, I can honestly say, shit, nigga, I'm a boss. I'm a CEO. Where, where the fuck I'm at? I, I could go anywhere in the motherfucking world and hold my head up high for my accolades. So it took a, I could have did it an easier route, a smarter route. I didn't have to take this treacherous route that I took to get where I'm at. But you know what, my nigga? I took the scenic route, and I'm here, my nigga, and I ain't going no goddamn well. So it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, no. Talk to us a little bit about your drink, bro. The drink, Tito's Old Fashioned Orange. So, you know, that's a that's a real popular item now. Thanks to the to my folks. Thanks to everybody that's been rocking with me, man. Y'all really appreciate a good soda. So, you know, it's popular. And I'm going to tell you the whole story, man, how, how that shit came about. So one day my mama was drinking a soda, and she was thinking about my dad. He passed, so she was real sad. She was drinking a Coke. I said, you know what? How about if I flip that motherfucker up, that, that frown upside down? How about if I create a soda with your husband's face on it? And any time that you have, if you feel sad or you're missing your husband, you could pop open the soda, look at the bottle, and you see your husband's face. So it started off with that. You know, I wanted to do that. But then I ended up digging deeper into the story. When my father came to America, he worked for Coca-Cola Bottling Company, and he couldn't wait to go to the coca-cola company to have an orange crush so his favorite soda was orange crush and that's where that tito's old-fashioned orange came in the whole idea of that was the motivational factor that my old man had in america that if he had a soda every day that he could be more productive and work harder and so you know i put all that in a nutshell and it is what it is bro so uh, tell us a little bit more about your pops man like like what what is he italian my pops was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina, but he's full-blooded Italian. His mom was from the Tuscan region of Italy. His father was from the southern region of, uh, southern region of Italy. Uh, my father came to America when he was 14 years old and was washing dishes at an Italian restaurant. At the same time, he was saving his money, saving his ducats. When he was 17 years old, he opened up his coffee shop right across the street from Madison Square Garden. So he started meeting Joe, uh, Joe Frazier, uh, a lot of boxers that were boxing in the New York area. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people that came or whatever, they would go to his coffee shop. And from then on, he progressed to uh, going to culinary art school in France. My old man speaks 10 fluid languages. So by the time my old man passed away, he was already speaking 10 languages. He traveled the world. He was the youngest world-renowned chef at 36 years old. He was a master chef. And he went to some school in Paris, France, and he was the youngest at the time. Everybody was 60, 70 years old. So at the time, he was the youngest master chef in the world. You know what I'm saying? At 36 years old. Today, you have people on the Food Channel, 12, 13-year-old kids that are fucking chef prodigies and fucking know how to cook at nine years old. But we're talking about the 60s and the 70s, you know what I'm saying? So right, right. years ago, you know, that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? 